Welcome to another short Vollog project video where I'm going to share yet another update on my Volink USB to serial adapter uh, which has been gaining popularity recently being used by many people as you may know I do offer these on my TND store but before I get started on the subject let me mention that I'm looking for some embedded software developers from Romania that are willing to work on very interesting projects to help with development of firmware so if you are an embedded software developer preferably from Romania or the EU reach out to me by email to contact at vollog.com ever since I've started offering the option for the Shelly programming cable lots of people have ordered one because it makes the job of flashing an otherwise dangerously mains connected relay very safe by not having to power it from mains but just supplying it with DC power from the Volink itself but this video is not about that it's about the uh, latest revision of the board and uh, the changes that it contains and some future plans for this project so as you may have noticed previously there was no power led on the Volink and to be honest for my personal use case I don't really need one but I do understand people that want a power status LED so that they get a quick glimpse of whether the board has power or not personally I think that because the Volink is so reliable in operation the power LED is redundant and uh, I do remember the times when I was using other cheap USB to serial adapters uh, from AliExpress there were the occasional issues with the micro USB connector failing or the onboard chip failing so it was nice to be able to see that you still got power to the board at least nonetheless I added uh, a, an LED a power LED to the new revision and I placed it right here next to the USB connector now because I added these two extra components to my schematic the LED and the resistor I decided to switch to a resistor network here to replace four 1 kilo ohm resistors with a single uh, package to further optimize my bill of materials and uh, to improve the design for manufacturing and another small change I did was to bump the 4.7 microfarad decoupling capacitor on the USB to serial chip to 10 microfarads because I was already using that uh, value at the output of the uh, regulator that I use on the board this once again optimizes my bomb uh, for using less parts as this will become important later and while I was revisiting the PCB layout I also switched to these uh, nicer uh, labels which are created with the uh, Kai Buzzard uh, plugin for KiCad no extra functionality because of these but they do look nicer when I had my design ready I submitted the Gerber files to PCBWay.com and I ordered a set of 10 PCBs uh, plus this uh, steel stencil required for the assembly of the boards which I did myself and China is going through some hard lockdowns now due to COVID but they somehow still managed to ship the order to me almost as usual I opted for gold plating on this set of 10 units and they do look nice so I might offer a few of these on my TND store as a uh, first edition for slightly more than the usual the gold plating will of course offer no real advantage other than knowing that you got one of the first units built from this revision and that you will be supporting the channel by purchasing one and the same can be said about revision D if you have one of the previous revisions like revision C you will gain no new functionality with revision D other than the power LED so if you really need that then you might consider getting one of the newer ones otherwise you already have a really nice board another thing I was thinking about these past few days and this is something where I would like some feedback from my audience so leave a comment below uh, because I was working on the circuit that I had power from uh, the Volink at 3.3 uh, volt but the circuit also had its own internal 3.3 volt rail I was thinking what would happen in that case when both devices are feeding uh, the 3.3 volt rail and to start figuring out what would happen we need to take a look at the internal diagram of this uh, regulator that I am using on the Volink we can see they are using a p-channel MOSFET as a series pass element and although they don't show it here there could also be a diode across that which could theoretically have current going through it but only as long as V out is higher than V in in order to forward bias that diode otherwise as long as we are feeding 3.3 volt on that pin there shouldn't be any issues if that voltage is stable 
Now, adding a series external Schottky diode uh, would add an undesirable voltage drop on my 3.3 volt line, so I would like to avoid that. There's also the option of placing the diode at the input of the LDO uh, where I can spare the voltage drop, but if it's not going to have any issues, I would like to keep the bomb cost to a minimum. So, yeah, I would appreciate some feedback on this in the comments below. I guess my question is really related to the LDO internal structure. Is there anything else I'm missing here? Other problems that might occur. And the last thing that I wanted to mention is that I am preparing to have the voling boards professionally assembled. And I have started the conversation with ACM to handle the manufacturing of the voling and the uh, next batch of voldings will probably take a while for it to be available. And this is where all of the uh, bill of material and design for manufacturing optimization I did are going to make a difference because less bomb items will mean less cost for manufacturing these in an automated factory. I just can't continue to hand assemble these even though it's going to cost more to have them assembled in a factory. I've estimated that it's probably going to double the cost of what it was uh, costing me to make these on my own but my time and resources are more precious than that. So yeah, this was the update regarding the Volving Revision D. Same as always, this is an open source project, so you can access the source files for this project on my GitHub repository, which will be linked in the description below. And if you'd like to support the channel, you can do so on Patreon with as little as $1 per month. Thank you for watching, and I will be seeing you next time.